Hello, welcome back, Recapped Mystery here. Today, I'm going to explain a sci-fi comedy film called Geohazard. Watch out and take care. The film's opening scene features an advertisement for the beautiful girl pill. According to the advertising, the pill is a one-of-a-kind drug that will reorganize women's brains, nerves, and genes transforming them into the most attractive versions of themselves. Because of its popularity and effectiveness, the beautiful girl pill is sold out everywhere for the first year. Any girl who takes it notices an immediate change in her body and face structure. Suffice it to say, the pill is quite successful, if not revolutionary. Women, on the other hand, begin to feel the drug's adverse effects after less than two years of use. Some people have severe allergic reactions while others die brain dead in seconds. On closer examination, it is discovered that the pill has directly damaged the majority of the women's brains, causing their frontal lobes to shrink in size. As a result, even the simplest chores cause them confusion and difficulties. Furthermore, they become emotionally insatiable, and their sense of pain and pleasure fades. The drug's effects on the human brain and genes are significantly worse than the scientists anticipated while developing the tablet. Soon after, experts discover that the pill has given rise to a virus known as the beautiful girl virus, which is exceedingly contagious. The virus is airborne but can only be transmitted through the kiss of an infected individual. Any woman infected with it transforms into a zombie-like creature with a desire to kiss every male in their path. The worst thing is that every man who is kissed becomes infected and completely transforms into a woman. The film's protagonist is a young man named Kiaok. Kiaok and his pal discuss what they should do next as the illness spreads swiftly over China. They rush home after receiving a text from Kiaok's father to find a female chained in the living room. The father claims that the girl is Kiaok's brother who has been transformed into a woman as a result of the virus. Kiaok is skeptical and attempts to examine the girl's body, but the father states that he has previously examined and confirmed that it is a female. He tied the girl to the chair because she was trying to kiss the father. According to Kiaok's acquaintance, the virus will spread if the infected kisses them on any area of their body. The father suddenly feels a tremendous pain in his chest. They discover that Kiaok's brother kissed the father on the arm by accident. The father passes out, but just as they believe he is dead, he transforms into a lovely woman. The freshly formed girl wants to kiss Kiaok but is stopped by his companion. The two accept that Kiaok's family is no longer alive and that the women in front of them are zombies. As a result, they abandon them and flee outside. However, they are pursued by an infected woman before they can enter the automobile. They make it to the streets, but it is too late because the infection has spread beyond their control. The streets are packed with women who kiss every man they see. They try to contact the police, but they have been infected as well. Their phone signals will soon be shut off, and they will be unable to contact anyone for assistance. The two become stranded on the side of the road, surrounded by women. Kiaok realizes that the infected do not attack attractive ladies, so he advises them to go to the next clothing store within a mall and disguise themselves. However, because they are encircled, Kiaok's companion volunteers to distract the girls while sacrificing himself. He thinks that there is no better way to die than to be kissed by several ladies. Furthermore, he has never been in love, so this could be his one and only chance. Having stated so, the guy leaps into the open attracting the infected. As Kiaok flees to the mall, the females kiss him. Fortunately for him, the mall and apparel store are both completely vacant. He sits down on the couch to rest, and the clock moves forward a year. Kiaok still lives in the now demolished store. According to the radio, the beautiful girl virus has swept over China, and survivors have organized camps around the country. Kiaok, on the other hand, lives alone at the store. He dresses up in women's attire and wears a wig to go out and get food supplies every now and then. During one of these excursions, he enters a car to search for supplies, only to discover a woman in the backseat. In an attempt to save his life, he flees, but an infected woman pursues him to the store. She strikes him from behind while he is checking the supplies, but Kiaok is saved by a stranger just in time. The stranger is accompanied by a girl who, surprise, does not attack them. She has been infected by the virus, but her body has not changed into a zombie, indicating that she is immune. The man's name is Li Wei. 
and the girl's name is Ziaki. Li Wei is a member of a survival camp who is looking for survivors. On his quest, he came across Ziaki and rescued her. He is taking her to the tower, where a group of doctors has been trying to find a cure for the beautiful girl virus because she is the only lady in China who is immune. Ziaki is a valuable asset to humanity who has the ability to halt the pandemic. Kiaok is invited to the survivor's camp by Li Wei since it is far safer than staying at the mall. The three then proceed to the parking lot. Kiaok had left his car parked a year before. He tries to restart it as Li Wei protects them from the infected. The automobile soon starts, and they are on their way to the survivor's camp. Unbeknownst to them, a man dressed as a woman is riding a bike and following them. He is a spy from a competing camp who robs and steals goods from the other camps. When they arrive at the base, Li Wei has Ziaki wear a gadget around her mouth so the guys will feel secure around her. Even if she is immune, the virus remains in her body, implying that her kiss is lethal. When Kiaok is alone with Li Wei, he changes the mouth gadget so that she may open it on her own. The duo then meets the Inquiry Corps a group made up of the most courageous guys who travel into the city to get supplies. Li Wei, who is now clothed as a woman, is their leader. They intend to transport Ziaki to the tower while asking Kiaok to remain safe in the camp. Ziaki and the investigation team go for a local convenience store to stock up on provisions for their expedition. Back at camp, Kiaok discovers the enemy spy passing on information about Ziaki to his camp. He sees that Ziaki and the others are in danger and rushes to their aid. Meanwhile, the enemy camp attacks the investigative corp and Ziaki. They are holding Ziaki captive, but a sniper from the investigation corp fires on them, resulting in a gunfight. Kiaok comes just in time to get Ziaki to a safer location. The shootout becomes heated, and the majority of the members of the investigative corps are slain. Kiaok, Li Wei, and Ziaki are the only survivors. But, before they can run, the other group apprehends them. The leader makes Ziaki wear the mouth device for her own safety and intends to utilize her for his own gain. But his ambitions are thwarted when she effortlessly removes the device thanks to the tweak Kiaok made earlier. She then kisses the leader on the lips. As he falls to the ground and begins to morph into a lady, his teammates flee in fear of the same fate. The three survivors return to their van, which is now surrounded by sick women. Because he is still dressed as a girl, Li Wei offers to get rid of them. He murders them all, and the three continue driving to the tower. After a few minutes, Li Wei requests to exit the vehicle, admitting that he, too, has been kissed. Kiaok pledges to take Ziaki to the tower and bids farewell to Li Wei. The duo rests in an isolated spot at night. They drink while sitting in front of the fire. Ziaki recalls her fiance who died a year ago when the illness first began to spread. It turns out that she kissed him without realizing she was afflicted. Kiaok consoles her by kissing her hand. They finally make it to the tower the next day, but are unhappy to find it deserted. The pair believes the tower was attacked by the infected. A group of infected ladies attacks them as they discuss what to do next. To their astonishment, they are rescued by men from a local industry. The tower turns out to be an old factory where a bunch of troops and scientists have gathered to find a cure. The tower's leader, Dao Cheng, greets them and introduces them to his right-hand man, Big P. They collect Ziaki's blood samples for further study. She then retires to her room to relax while Dao Cheng tours the facility with Kiaok. He is initially escorted to the lab, where Dr. Hu is examining blood samples, who is an alcoholic with a tendency to forget things. Yet he is the best researcher they have. Then, Kiaok is led to the section of the lab where the afflicted girls are housed so that the physicians can research them. The chamber where infants are housed is the most startling aspect of the facility. Kiaok is skeptical since Xiao Cheng maintains that the babies were recently rescued. Everyone gathers for dinner at night. Doctor Hu becomes inebriated and confesses that in order to manufacture an antidote, a chemical must be removed from Ziaki's brain and she would die instantaneously as a result. Even after that, the antidote will not be sufficient to save humanity. Kiaok glances at Zhao Cheng, perplexed, and has the impression that he knows everything. He hurriedly shoves Zhao Cheng aside and flees with Ziaki. Zhao Cheng, Big P, and the other guys trail them. 
Ziaki inadvertently enters a room and discovers non-infected women inside. It turns out that Ziaki is not the only person who was not affected by the virus. But before they can ask any additional questions, Big P knocks Kialka unconscious. When he regains consciousness, he learns that the women who are immune to the virus are referred to as the wisdom species. They have a special chemical in their brains that will aid in the creation of the antidote. Dao Cheng intends to utilize them to research the virus and develop a vaccine to end the pandemic. Despite his good intentions, he intends to murder the women for something that isn't even assured. Furthermore, he forced his men to mate with a kidnapped wisdom species in order to give birth to the kids that Kiao had noticed earlier. When the ladies die, he intends to utilize the kids as the antidote because they, too, are of the wisdom species. Kialk agrees to assist Zhao Cheng with his scheme for the good of humanity, but requests one last meeting with Ziaki. He approaches her and informs her of his resolve to assist Zhao Cheng. Ziaki is disappointed, but before departing, Kialk instructs Zhao Cheng to make the women wear his mouth device when they are brought outside for surgery. Ziaki picks up on the idea and shows all of the girls how to remove the mouthpiece on their own. The girls are forced to wear gorgeous clothes the next day and are taken to the operating room. They are also forced to wear mouthpieces that Kialk has discreetly altered. As the operation begins, they remove the devices and kiss all of the doctors, infecting them. Meanwhile, Kialk rushes to the area where the afflicted women are being held and frees them so that they can attack Chang's troops. Their scheme succeeds, and the girls are eventually liberated. They gather their children and flee the factory with Ziaki, but Kialk remains to broadcast the truth about the tower to survivors all throughout China via radio. He is quickly attacked by Zhao Cheng, and the two battle. Zhao Cheng is about to execute him, but Ziaki arrives just in time and saves Kialk. Ziaki, on the other hand, is stabbed during the scuffle. Finally, Ziaki and Kialk broadcast the truth about the tower to the survivors via radio. They believe Ziaki has no chance of surviving the injury, but Kwaku refuses to let her die alone. Finally, they connect two wires, causing an explosion that blows up the facility and kills themselves in the process. Outside, the remaining wisdom species and their children watch the place burn. The film concludes with them walking away, resolved to use their newly learned information to put a stop to the pandemic. The end. Please subscribe to assist the channel. Turn on notification and leave a like, thank you for taking the time to watch, see you again soon.